You don't want any cow sauce. It's in the ethan. <laughs> Is it sauce or what? Oh yeah, she sauce. <laughs> what kind of setup you have going on here, Jimmy? People are gonna think I'm so lazy, dude. Like you just like buy, like you're just bombing in boxers right now. Yeah, I'm, I love I'm it. Putting the work in. You gotta you know? be comfy though. I, it's it's key. It's it's an, key. It's, if you guys want to be good at editing, like John, you gotta be comfortable. Yeah. If you want to see the video, he's editing. It's already up on my channel. It's a coyote hunt. My very first coyote. He is cranking out the edits right now. But Austin and I, we have to go check the traps. We are on the final morning of. Well, this wasn't really like a tour or a trip or anything like that, but. We spent a couple days here at the farm, chilling in the old camper. And Austin, look, <laughs> look at you. You're, you're all ready to go. I'm ready. You're waiting on me. You're like, I want to see the coon. I know. Hopefully, we trap something today. It's cold, though, I promise. It was like 13 this morning. I think we're probably up to about 22, 23 right now. Um, but we got to go check. We got to go check on the coons um, and see if we see if we picked anything up. So we've, you guys kind of know the drill by now. We're running trail cameras and lots of traps trying to kill all these coons. Um, just because they keep eating all my sweet corn and uh, I like my sweet corn and uh, so yeah go ahead give her give her the old full send boys we're gonna go check out the traps and then later on today we might shoot some more coyotes I don't know I had a great time when I did that but, but there's a lot of stuff to do here at the farm a lot of things to take care of so we'll we'll see if there's anything in the traps There's something in there. There's something in that there's one. There's something in that one. What is it that? There's nothing in that one, but there's something in this one right here. What is that? Oh awesome. my god. Wait, where's where what's all the blood? No clue. Wait, wait, wait. What happened here, boys? Is it Why is there so much blood? That's a lot of blood. Why is there so much blood? Oh god, there's a tra we have a trail cam in there. It's laying on it right now. And there's, it's covered in blood. Oh, and there's tons of blood. Hopefully the trail cam got it. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what we're gonna do. Well, the first trap had a possum in it. Second trap had nothing. We're pulling up to the third and fourth trap now. And it looks like nothing. Except 100% of fillets gone. So I wonder what's, cause there was two fillets in here, a thousand percent. Grab the, the card on that guy. See, is it dead? So we're gonna check the footage. You guys kind of know the drill by now if you've been watching all these videos of kind of how we roll, but yeah. Remember there was two, we had two big like herring fillets or whatever they were. So. And then it's gone. See, these traps could be freezing up too. Like that's just it. Like everything's just kind of, it's cold out here. Well, we're gonna review the footage here in a bit. We gotta go check, what, one more? Yeah. And then we might, honestly, we might move one of these traps. Put it, put it to where we're catching these possums. Kind of up our odds just a little bit. We got one more trap over here we gotta go check. That's a possum. We got a possum, boys. That's the first dog proof catch ever. Ever. For us. ever. Well, that thing's alive. So we've been using a couple different traps. I didn't realize how many possums were around here. We got a possum So clearly problem. possums do, like, they don't care about cold. No. Because we're not getting any coon action. Yeah, we got a possum problem, guys. So there's the, uh, that's the third possum in two days that we've got. Yep. So We're going to unhook him and kind of reset all these traps. Go watch all the footy and see if there's anything interesting on them. What do you think we caught? What do you think? What's your? What would be your guess? What we? What we caught? Coon. Nope. Two possums. Two possums. One in the dog proof. All right. Now it is time to review all the trail cam footage. We got one card in here. This looks like it's gonna be the possum cam. Okay. Well, the first clip is it. Okay. It knocked down the trail cam. So we made the mistake of not zip tying the trail cam up on the on the trap because. Oh, that thing is ugly looking. Oh, it just licked the lens, I'm pretty sure. It's freaking out. It's trying to get out. We can't see anything, so we have no idea why it's even bloody. Every single one of these clips is literally nothing because the camera was on the ground. So when the trap went off, it must have made the camera flip. And for some reason, the, tr the camera is not getting the possum going in. That's two days in a row. We have not gotten the, the I don't know if it's the camera's fault or what, but we don't know what made the what made the possum bloody. So comment down below what you guys think. What do you think would make it that bloody? Do you think something was after it? Do you think something was clawing at it? Or do you think it was just kind of like self-destructive, try to get out super, super hard and ended up just like having a bloody nose or something? I don't know. I mean, that was one hell of a bloody nose. There's not really much on that. I apologize for that. We, we, we kind of botched the camera setup. We need to probably just set the cameras outside of the cage. It seems like every time we put them in the cage, the animal that gets trapped in there just has an absolute freak out fest with it and just likes to throw it on the ground so try the next sd card let's see what's on here okay so this is where the two traps were side by side it looks like a pretty big animal animal on clip too i don't know what that is you guys should comment down below what you guys think that is i want to say that's a it looks kind of like a beaver but I, it's probably a raccoon i don't think there's many beavers around here 
But none of these other clips have anything. There's bunnies. Clip 5 has a little bunny just chilling. Pretty much it. Nothing. We didn't trap any in those. And then the last clip is the trap that had nothing in it. But there was also no dog food. We put dog food in there. And there was no dog food when we got there. So I'm guessing mice. Oh, yeah. There's a mouse. Look at that little guy. Yep. Well, clip 16 got a little mice. Nothing really all that cool. So this concludes today's section of what's on the trail cam now let's go reset all the traps so hopefully tomorrow morning there's actually raccoons in there that's what we're after all righty folks we are well we already set out the traps i didn't vlog it i feel like you guys have gotten the point i don't want to make all these videos super repetitive the farm vlogs but we kind of set these back up we actually moved it so we've been setting them like i don't know can you guys see the tower thing we've been setting it kind of out there somewhat way across by the farm and we brought it all the way back so that's our south hunting blind that you guys have seen us hunt out of and this is the the ducks diner that we've hunted out of too so we brought them over here just to see if there's anything different so the trail came here with one trap and then put the dog proof there for a fun hack if you guys are having issues like us for mice take a corn cob set it right there or a golf ball jake suggested but that way the mice can't get in there and then you trap them the first day that we did that we caught a possum and then we have one trap right here and then over here we set it by this water so this water is frozen but I imagine it's going to unthaw, and then we got coyote tracks here too, which is kind of crazy how close this is to the farm. We might need to hunt this tonight, but we got a trap here next to this water. Hopefully it unfreezes. That's another tip is if you can set your trap by open water when everything else freezes, it always helps. And then lastly, we got one right here. And these trail cam, trail cam, trail cam, and uh, that's pretty much, pretty much what we have going on. We're just trying to explore the farm, see what's all out here. We've been having difficulties catching the coons on that side, so we're going to see if we can catch them over here. But we're going to go head back. Head in the truck probably and then go do a coyote set and see if Austin can shoot his first coyote. Are you excited or what? Oh yeah, let's shoot some yotes. You wanna shoot your first yote? I think we're gonna set up out here. This is where we, we had a stand out here yesterday and we saw three or four. Um, didn't end up shooting any, so we're gonna come back and see if we can get them in any closer. But this is where we're gonna kinda stop. We're gonna. We're gonna sit way down there, but as you can tell, you can see quite a bit, quite a bit of stuff up here. But this will be the first stand here. We just set the truck there, we're unloaded, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the truck down and then basically walk all the way down there. And uh, we'll see what happens, I don't know. This could be, could be interesting. We're not necessarily experts, we're just trying to figure it out as we go. So if you guys have any tips for us, let us know. One eternity later. Good, John. Uh-huh. Before sunset, we've got to go try to kill some, some den or some food. So rabbit squirrel is on the agenda. Maybe pigeon or something, but I don't think you can... Well, you might be able to squirrel hunt with an AR. But I'm going to walk around with this. Austin's going to walk around with a shotgun and see what we can find. A ton of tracks, but nothing really happening here. They like to come out of here at night, which you can't shoot past sunset. So we're going to move to another spot. We're jumping the warthog and go to the other side of the, the creek here and see if we can find one. I got him. I got him. You got him? I got him. Oh my god. He just came right from back here. He just ran right up on me? Yeah. He was just like sitting here. We got dinner. We got dinner. Oh my gosh. Heck yeah. Oh my gosh. We were literally strategizing because we saw the one. And so we were strategizing on where we thought it went. And we were about to just walk this way. And they go behind you. And I swung the gun around and shot it. We got dinner, boys. You want to go get him? Yeah, go get him. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. PB rabbit. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a big one. Yeah, I, I aim for the head right there, you can see. Yep, yeah, I got him right there. Oh, yeah. He was toast before he even knew it. Heck yeah. Well, the sun's not down, let's go try to get another one. Yeah. We got a, we got three three miles to feed, one rabbit's not gonna do it, so let's keep going. John hungry. A few moments later. I see it, I see it. It's in the hill. I see him. You got him. Got him. Well, folks, we are here in the shop. Shout out to Kai Dog for hooking it up. We got nice big sprayers next to us, but this is going to be a nice warm place to kind of skin these guys. So I'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible, not take too much of your guys' time, but I'm going to do kind of an informative job of showing you how to basically take a rabbit. I mean, we showed you kind of, kind of how to hunt them. I mean, we basically just drove and then walked until we saw one run and then we shot with a shotgun. So it's not like super hunty, like, you know, stalking or anything like that. But I mean, there's a ton of them around here 
And uh, you know, again, we're looking for some food for dinner and I haven't done one yet this year. So I wanted to go ahead and do this and I'll show you guys how to skin it, how to completely gut it. And then later, hopefully today, maybe even tomorrow, it just kind of depends. We gotta head home. We're in a big hurry to get home. Uh, we might eat this uh, tonight or tomorrow. You guys will see that as well. So what you do, we got two guys right here. Um, we'll start with, start with this guy. So what's, one thing you can do is you can take your fingers and kind of pinch it right down, right down in the middle and then just slice kind of just basically right in the middle of their in their back and you'll kind of see why here in a second just make a nice little incision pa right past the skin till you feel that bone and then stick your fingers in here and if the, it's really important to do this quickly after you uh you shoot them or kill them uh especially if it's cold outside because you'll see these their bodies are still warm and how easy it will be to you basically just want to rip rip their skin and you can use your knife to help you as well but you just want to make a basically a, a circular rip all the way around from their back all the way to their belly and then back around again see now you have two sections it's completely cut like this then all you got to do is you can grab on their legs and you just pull like this pull like this all the way back like that pull from all angles until you get the skin completely off like that there you go. Now, see all the fur, everything's kind of cleaned off, everything that you need. You can kind of pull that through like that. This is what you're going to want to do. You take, it doesn't really matter what order you want to do it in, but I mean, you can cut their head off first. It's probably what I would do. So you just take it, just slice it completely off, get that, get that guy out of the way. Then right at the, right at the knuckle, you can, you can make a cut. So it's easier if you got some like shears and stuff, like kitchen shears, but you can take a knife. And usually you can kind of pop right through it like that just like that take your knife cut around it there you go now, sometimes you might get some fur on it some muscle i guess again i'm not an expert i've only done this a handful of times in my life now it's time to gut this guy you just take your knife just kind of cut it right down the middle you don't have to go very deep just a nice little cut just to cut through the skin right here Once you kind of get a hole, you can kind of lift up on it and then just kind of slice your way up, slice your way down. Next step, get your trash bag out, whatever you're throwing the guts into, it doesn't really matter. And rip these guys out. So you can throw, you can throw all the stuff that you, you know, the legs and stuff like that, throw the head in there and you just take your guts. Should be able to just kind of pull these suckers out. Take your guts, throw them out. I'm sure there's better ways of gutting than this, but this is just, again, an easy way of doing it. Just kind of pull them all out. And then, obviously, you want to give these suckers a nice rinsing when you're done. All right, now that the guts are, they're mainly out. Again, once I rinse it, I'll get, I'll get a lot, of, lot more of it out. Um, now it's time to quarter it. So, just like anything else, you just want to basically cut off the back legs, get the front legs, and then you, have, you get the back straps just like anything else. That's how I do it. You don't really miss a whole lot of meat that way. I mean, you get the majority of it. So you just want to cut right at the joint, cut kind of all, all the way around it, just like you would anything else. And there you go, that's that's quarter number one. Same thing on the other side. Cut all the way around it. There you go, that's the last leg. Now you're dealing with the back straps here. So the easiest way is just to make an incision down, down the spine, and then just cut out the back strap. There's a couple different ways you do this, but this is what I found easiest. So just cut a line down the spine, cut down like this. Basically, you just cut it right around their little rib cage here. There's a nice little piece of meat on the back. So you can see this is your piece of meat, so then you just kind of cut the skin around it. All the way down its back. Do like that. Rip that last little bit of skin off. That's a nice little back strap right there, baby. So, same deal. I'm done showing you. You guys get the other side. Same thing on the other rabbit. Now, you just wash them off. And now, let's get to where we cook them tomorrow and we are back at the house folks it is actually like the day after the next this is lunch of the following night of you guys know what i'm saying it's the next day and i'm at home i actually clean up the beard a little bit let me know do you guys like it cleaned up do you guys like it scruffy macy wanted it all kind of trimmed up and looking better so that's what i did but let me know if you guys what do you guys think actually I'd, i mean i care what you guys think but you guys you guys probably don't really care so anyways i'm gonna shut up 
this is what we're cooking with here, folks. We're going to try something a little bit different. So here, sorry, my kitchen is an absolute mess. We have a lifetime supply of clementines and then just absolute garbage over here. Just I have not cleaned up my kitchen in, in a hot minute. We got cookies. We have some puppy chow. If you guys want to come over, we got lots of, lots of good food for you. Anyways, here we go. We got some rabbit. It's just been chilling in water for the last day, you know, getting all the bloods and all that nasty stuff out of there. But as far as cooking wise, I'm going to try two things. So I found some of this Kentucky kernel seasoned flour. That's just like, you know, your chicken fried stuff. And that's what's in this bowl, the Red Bull. And then in here we have some Frank's Red Hot Wing Sauce, which you guys have seen my recipe for frying fish. This is the move. I don't know if it's the move for rabbit. We're going to find out. Regular flour. So that's one recipe. That's another. We're going to try them both. We're going to see. I got a cast iron skillet getting heated up now. We're just going to fry it in some vegetable oil. And that's how I'm going to prepare it. And it's just me. Austin actually took the other rabbit home and he's cooking it. Um, and John actually left and went home. So it's just me, just me chilling with one rabbit. And uh, yeah, well, we're going to. We're gonna cook it up, we'll see how it tastes. So the first step here, just you know, give give the meat some rinsing, okay? We got a back strap here. So we're gonna we'll kind of split it up. We'll do a little bit of both. We should get all the fixings off of this guy. Looks pretty good. So we're gonna throw one back strap in the regular flour and then one back strap in the hot sauce. Just fry the rest of this stuff up. We'll just kinda like I said, we're gonna give it, we're gonna do half and half, and then I'll try to keep track of it while I'm frying it. And uh, we'll see which one tastes better. All right, now that all of the meat is sitting in this stuff, we gotta interrupt the cooking sesh. Come on, bub. Ben, come here. What you thinking? Do you want to try some rabbit? It's just me and you, guy. I mean, I don't. I mean, you have some dog food. I feel like rabbit's gonna be a little bit better. What's up, big guy? Huh? You wanna try some rabbit with me? All right. Sounds like it sounds like he's somewhat interested. So this is what we got. We have back leg, front leg, back strap, back leg, front leg, back strap. And again, this is seasoned flour, normal flour, and we're gonna do one in the the Frank's wing sauce. I like the wing sauce better than actually just the original hot sauce. So we'll let these guys soak for a little bit. I mean, if you really, really want this to taste super, super good, you're gonna want it to soak for a little bit longer. But for me, you know, I'll let it go for just a just a few minutes. Then these guys, you know, you just want to give them a nice. Nice coating on it. Your next step, crank up the heat on this guy. I'm using a cast iron skillet. I think it's probably the best bet. Next step, throw some veggie oil in there. Get that thing nice and frothing with that. I might have to put a little bit more than that. I'm, I mean, I'm basically deep frying these suckers. The next step on these guys, the Franks, you wanna kinda dabble that off and then you just throw it in normal, I just throw it in normal flour. I could probably throw it in the seasoned flour and it might taste even better, but I kinda wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison. Which one's gonna taste better? The Franks with normal flour, this is my Go to fish it recipe or Colonel's Kentucky K Kentucky Colonel's seasoned flour. Give it a little flick of some water. Oh yeah, that sounds hot to me. All right, here goes nothing. You know, I'm looking at this rabbit and I'm wondering why does this not look like fried chicken? And you guys have probably already commented, Flair, you're a freaking idiot. Where'd you put the egg? Why did you not wash it in egg before you put it in the flour, you big dumb idiot? Well, you guys are right. I'm a dumb idiot. I have no idea why I just did that. I literally rinsed it off, threw it in some flour, threw it in the pan thinking, yeah, that's how you cook chicken. No, it's not. No, it is absolutely not. Don't think that's going to be all that great. I mean, it's literally just flour and, and yeah, that, yeah, I'm not too positive. I mean, this one's going to taste all that great. I mean, I'm sure the Frank stuff's going to be decent, but I don't know about this whole nah just throwing flour on it, no no egg wash or anything. I don't know, maybe maybe it won't be bad. These uh these back straps are probably almost done here. I'm just an idiot, folks. In case you were wondering. I realize that I'm just an idiot. Well, folks, can you tell which side I botched it on? Can you can you tell which which one was a botch and which one wasn't? If you were wondering, this is the good one with the with the frame. Luckily I decided to do this and didn't just do the entire thing like that. That would have been terrible. This I don't know if any human's ever done that. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's not as bad as I'm, I'm making it out to be. I just imagine without the egg, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna be right. But I guess we'll let these cool down for a second and we'll, we'll, we'll taste test them. I'll let you guys know. Well, moment of truth. Tenderloin. The old backstrap. Whoa. Whoa. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. That is really good. I'm not even kidding. Like, I mean, really good. I must have got lucky when I cooked it that I cooked at the right time and everything to make it good. But here's the other one. Here's the non egg washed um, fried. I 
That's not that bad either. I am honestly shocked. There is no game taste. I mean, absolutely zero game taste to this. Wonder if it's just the back strap that tastes this good. I can't believe this. Dude, Austin and John are missing out. Wow, this is really good. But that's the back strap. I mean, I imagine that's probably the best the best piece here. Now it's time for the big the big mamma jamma. Imagine this is gonna be a little bit more gamey. Maybe not. That's hot. Mm -mm. Wow, who knew? Did you guys know rabbit was this good? I mean, seriously, good. Like, I'm not even just saying, oh yeah, it's not bad. This is phenomenal, folks. Rabbit is delicious. Seriously, delicious. I'm not even, Finn. Finn, wake up. Wake up, it's good. Would you like some? Do you want some rabbit? You gotta try it. Does that smell good? Shake. Oh, look at that. He is such a good dog. All right, there's your little piece of rabbit, big guy. Oh, all right, you're not gonna give us a review? What do you think, was that good? Oh, you, you, you ate the whole thing, now you're licking your chops. That must have been pretty yummy. See, even Finn liked it. I liked it, Finn liked it. Hopefully you guys at home should seriously go try it. I'm serious. I showed you guys how to do it from start to finish, how to clean it, how to prepare it, how to cook it, and I'm telling you it's delicious. I, I think I've had rabbit maybe one time in my life, and it was a long time ago, like a long, long time ago. That was phenomenal. Not, it wasn't even tough, it was, it was moist, it was tender. I don't know, maybe I got lucky. Maybe I got lucky when I cooked it, right? I don't know, but anyways, if you guys enjoyed this Kill and Cook video, let me know in the comment section down below. Hopefully we're gonna be doing some more. I'm not gonna name the species, but if you guys wanna give me some ideas, comment some ideas down below. What do you want to see me kill and prepare and cook next? Comment down below, really do appreciate the view. Peace!